let's consider one more situation where conservation of energy shows up. So um, in this case, suppose that you have a cup of hot coffee, like so. Um, and then you simply just wait a while, and then it is not hot anymore. Okay, so what's going on in this situation? Well, if we draw some energy bar charts, then when we start out, clearly we have some thermal energy. And then later, the thermal energy is smaller. So where did it go? Well, it doesn't take very long to you know, go through all the kinds of energy we've seen so far. It doesn't become kinetic energy. It doesn't become potential energy. It doesn't become electric or nuclear or you know, chemical energy or any of the other types. Um, and so if you ask in real life, where did it go? Well, the heat was transferred to the environment. Okay, so um, we know that that happens. You know, it's a very familiar thing that happens. And so this is a new way that energy can um, go into or out of a system. It's not work. Um, it's not a type of energy, but it's a way that we can have um, a transfer that we haven't talked about up to this point. Okay, so this is a new term, heat, um, which is a transfer of thermal energy from hot objects to colder objects. Okay, so this happens spontaneously. We don't have to do anything special to make this happen. It, it just happens. Um, for reasons that I am not really familiar with, um, the um, symbol that we use for heat is Q. Um, it's not like H was used for other stuff, so it's kind of a weird choice. But um, Q is the symbol for heat transfer. Okay, so with this new way that we can transfer energy from one object to another, um, we add this to work as one of the possible ways to do that. So the work plus the heat is equal to the change in energy of a system. Okay, so. Um, the only two ways up to this point that we know of to add energy to a system are one, you can push on the system and do work on it, or two, you can put a really hot object next to it and the system will heat up. That will increase its thermal energy. But that's it. That's all we have. Um, there are no other known ways that we can transfer energy into or out of a system. Um, we have to do one of those two things. Um, if you take a chemistry class or if you go on to take a thermodynamics class, um, there are some different sign conventions that show up for this. Um, and so it's really just a choice of how we want to define heat. Um, so I think this way is relatively straightforward. Heat going into a system is a positive change in energy for the system. Um, work done on the system is a positive change in energy for the system. But sometimes people will use W minus Q or Q minus W. Um, and again, that's just then heat transferred out of the system or work done by the system. That's the only difference in those cases. Okay, so this law, this new and improved, you know, best um, conservation of energy law to date is called the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, and that sounds really fancy, but it's again, just another statement of conservation of energy. Now with the idea that um, another way we can get heat or we can get energy into and out of a system is by a spontaneous transfer of heat. Um, one other term that I want to mention briefly, just because, um, you know, it makes sense at this time is temperature. Okay, so temperature is another thing that can get mixed up with heat and thermal energy. So temperature is just um, a measure of the random kinetic energy of particles. Okay, so we have three terms here that um, you don't want to mix up. Thermal energy is a type of energy. Um, it's due to this random motion of particles. Temperature is um, a way that we measure that random kinetic energy of the particles. Um, it's the you know, average of those. It's not the total kinetic energy, um, which is what the thermal energy is, but it's the um, average of the um, thermal energy of those particles. And then heat is the transfer of thermal energy. Okay, so heat, temperature, and thermal energy are all different, but they're all related to each other.